Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films back again with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Last time around, we had The First Day, giving us an origin story on the Elric brothers and how at young at a young age, uh, uh, two young ages I guess, they're slightly different ages, but anyway. Uh, when they were young, the Elric brothers uh, started to show a proficiency in alchemy. Then their mother died, so they decided we're going to bring her back with taboo alchemy. Uh, that didn't go very well, although apparently it is possible. Uh, Ed was shown visions of hell and uh, was like, oh, I could, I could keep going. Roy Mustang found them afterwards, after they lost body parts, or in Al's case, all of his body. And he was like, hey, join the military. And they joined the military, and uh, Ed got a robotic arm, and they joined the military, and they were uh, they're off to Lior, I believe is what it was called, Lior City. Uh, and they are hoping to find a Philosopher's Stone to get their bodies back. Yeah. So, that is pretty much that. Uh, very interesting episode, and I'm interested to see where we're going this time. So, like always, the reaction is down in the description and in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and get right into this episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Here we go. Okay, interesting. So I, I'll let the credits play a little bit more. So, yeah, we have Gluttony. So I guess the, the, the woman there... Lust? Lust? Gluttony? I mean... Sins, basically. Okay. Lust. Well, a befitting name. Uh, alright. <laughs> you know... I feel like I've been, f I feel like I've been keeping up with this show pretty well, but, you know, okay, in the first episode when I made the thumbnail, I was actually, th I was struggling about what I was going to put in, uh, like, as the text in the thumbnail, because I like doing that, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to do, um, and I, I was struggling a bit, and I was like, I don't know hit the ground running and so i just kind of put that and i wasn't sure and i was kind of thinking like oh well maybe should i go back and you know change that or something but uh you know what after these after these two episodes that's seeming more and more like boy we're really hitting the ground running on everything so yeah all right that's episode three so a uh, lot of stuff to unpack here. Um, so, we made it to... Uh, what was it? Lior, I think, is what it was called. The the city. And we have everyone under Father Cornello uh, worshipping the sun god Leto. And this whole episode is basically religion versus alchemy. Which, not even, like... I mean, it is kind of like that. It's, you know, what do you believe in and should you believe in that, I guess. And it's like, I guess it's sort of belief versus reality for, uh, especially for Rose and uh, Edward. Um, but, because, I mean, it's not, it's not the whole thing of like, oh, well, he has religious powers. Like, well, no, he has alchemy, but he's passing it off. You know, he's a con man, obviously. And, uh... So he uses this Philosopher's Stone, or False Philosopher's Stone, which presumably that must also be what uh, Isaac McDougal had then in Episode 1, because uh, they talked about a Philosopher's Stone. So it must be this sort of False Philosopher's Stone that we've got going on, which is interesting. Uh, so presumably, uh, presumably these fake stones are being handed out uh, by, uh, I'm just going to assume her name is Lust. Uh, for what purpose? I'm not sure. She seems to be going around with her buddy Gluttony. Uh, they talked about Father, though. So, I, I, obviously I feel like we'll get more later on that. Maybe, I don't know. I guess they are sort of our villains at this point. Our sort of overarching villains, as opposed to our one-offs, uh, that we've had. 
Um, so yeah, so Father Cornello using the fake Philosopher's Stone, and he's been doing these sort of parlor tricks in order to gain followers, and uh, and yeah, he was trying to create a, basically a religious army in order to take over the country. I guess. It, a simple plan. Uh, it's a simple plan, but it checks out. You know, like, okay, I get it. And, I mean, it was working. He was getting people, you know, because, yeah, it's... Because it's... I, I guess it's something where it's like, you know... While, yes, it's not the power of God or anything like that. It's alchemy. But at the same time, there is something that he is doing. Which I, I get why he's attracted so many followers. Including... Poor young Rose. Uh, poor young Rose, who uh, who apparently lost. Uh, I don't remember if they said both her parents or just one or something, but um, but yeah, but he promised her that he would bring them back, but that's just not that's not happening. Um, so interesting stuff. Uh, good fight. I liked. Uh, I did like the fight. You know, Ed versus the Chimera. And then eventually uh, Ed versus Cornello, so that was really good. Um, and yeah, I thought I thought the escape. Okay, here's something interesting that I've that I'm finally figuring out about this show. Uh, the show's pretty goofy, actually. Like, there's a lot of you know serious moments, definitely, especially like at the end there when when you know talking about it's like, no, you can't bring people back. We learned that the hard way. But what you can do is keep moving forward, you know? Um, so, yeah, like, that sort of stuff is interesting. And that sort of stuff is interesting and it's good. But there are a lot of goofy moments in this, you know? Like, it just every time it would cut over and, you know, they do the sort of the stylistic goofy drawings and stuff like that was very weird. Um... Ed as a protagonist is very interesting because this guy, he's he, he's kind of arrogant, you know. He, he he's very arrogant. He's very cocky, but at the same time, he's already like it's it's not one of those like well he's really cocky, but you're waiting for him to be humbled. Like no, he's kind of already had that, you know. He's kind of already had that because he failed human transmutation and he has learned the hard way that no, you can't bring people back to life, you know? So he's already been humbled. It's like he's he's weirdly like arrogantly humbling other people, if that makes any sense, you know? So Yeah. It's it's a very interesting dynamic for a main character, you know? Um but yeah, so that stuff was interesting, and again, the escape was very goofy. Um, I I did like how they uh, they basically got him on radio saying that everything is fake. Uh, that was very that was clever, very funny. Uh, so I like that, and that's how they get uh that's how uh they get the people to uh, go against him. Um, uh, again, the fight with the chimera was very interesting. Man, that fucking auto mail shit. Like, honestly, like. It's interesting now, it's like, okay, you know, he, he did make the spear and everything, but that didn't fucking work. So he's, basically, most of what he, what Ed used was his, they, they, they called it auto mail last episode, I think. His auto mail uh, app appendages, basically, his arm and his leg. And, you know, obviously, it they show how great of an alchemist Ed is, but honestly... Now it's like, well, half of that is fucking Winry and, and and the grandmother doing this shit. Like, half of that is them because they made such good shit for him that he's able to do this, you know? So, um... So, yeah, I, I, I do kind of like that, actually, that it's not just, oh, Ed's just the fucking best. It's like, no, there is a lot in there, you know? There There is actually a lot more. And, you know, obviously Al pulling his weight, too, uh, which I like, so... Uh, let's see what else. Um, so yeah, they also had the rebound, uh, which was interesting. I didn't even know that was a thing that could happen, but yeah, he rebounded. 
So, in, I guess instead of creating a gun, it sort of backed into his arm, basically, and fucked him up. So, that was interesting, and I like how Ed, you know, literally used the fist of God to beat him. I like that. But I think the big thing from this episode is just the fucking tragedy of Rose, you know? This poor fucking girl who, I mean, granted, yes, you know, this is good that she is getting away from all of this shit, but it's like, that's a fucking downer, man. Like, this poor girl who lost her parents, and, I mean, I guess, honestly, going down the same path that Ed and Al did, you know, lost her parents, and, you know, found something that she thought would bring them back, but has to learn the hard way that that's just not possible, you know? Um, but yeah, I, see, I don't imagine we're going to keep her, but I kind of want to, like, I, I honestly, I, I really liked her, like, she was really interesting, but, but yeah, but I like how, you know, they have that sort of debate of like, you know, religion versus alchemy and, and, and I like how they go into like, yeah, alchemy, we're scientists, you know, we're scientists. So we have a hard time with, you know, miracles that just happen, you know, and I like that. And I like, you know, just everything of like, oh, well, you know, the sun god Leto with enough prayer, this will work and stuff. And it's like, that's not how the world works. And I like, he even brings up the story of Icarus, like it flew, flew too close to the sun we flew too close to the sun, you know? Like, that's not a guy in an iron suit. That's just an iron suit with a soul bonded to it, you know? So just everything, just Rose having basically just this crisis, basically, this crisis of faith, and eventually, you know, I mean, it's still, like, even after everything, it's starting to break her, you know? And her thinking, oh, they're keeping the Philosopher's Stone for themselves, but... But I like at the end, you know, again, it is, it is a reflection, it is a reflection of the story of Ed and Al from last episode, where it's like, yeah, she has to learn the hard way that this isn't gonna happen for her, you know? So, so yeah, but I like, even though Ed, you know, we kind of talk about he's kind of, an, he's, he's kind of arrogant, he's all, he's almost really an asshole, basically, but I like how at the end, even though he is still kind of harsh, he does say, look, what you have to do, you know, it's not about what you believe in. You have to make basically your own future, you know? You just need to keep moving forward. You've got two good legs, move forward. And I really did like that, you know? Uh, again, it's it, it makes Ed a very interesting character. Again, he's not... He's not... Amazing. He's not amazing. You know, he's not this, you know, great protagonist, basically. But... I, I do kind of like that. I like that um, he does... I don't know. He's not completely harsh. I guess, you know, asshole with a heart of gold, maybe. But, but yeah, that was really interesting, just how he handled uh, Rose. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then at the end, it's a false philosopher's stone, which is very, very interesting. So, how, how did that work? You know, who are, you know, lust and gluttony, I guess. And this person they're working for, I guess. So, so yeah, we'll have to see, we'll definitely have to see about that. But, um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, see, I feel a little bad. I feel like we haven't talked a whole lot in this discussion, but I mean, whereas the last couple episodes, we have been talking a pretty decent amount, but this is definitely one of those episodes where it's like shit, you know, just happens, just fucking go, you know, just fucking go. But I mean, I guess we kind of covered everything, you know? Um, and again, at the end of the day, you know, it's a very simple, oh, this guy, you want, he just wants power and stuff like that, so you understand him. It's like, I don't really need to understand, you know, his motivations too. I, we don't need to discuss it too much. You know, you understand it, but yeah. Um, but it's definitely, I feel like this is a, like, it's just such a fast-paced episode. But when I do sort of take a step back, and even though I did write, like, a decent amount of notes on this, too... Uh, but yeah, but just everything, you know, religion versus alchemy, I like that sort of debate. It makes sense to have something like that in this show, you know. I would be curious, again, I, I kind of mentioned this offhanded in the reaction, but I would be curious if there was anything about sorcery, too. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to introduce, like, that as a separate power system, uh, mainly because of because we have alchemy. If alchemy is going to be our power system, then that's our power system. Granted, I watch JoJo, and they change their power system all the fucking time, so... Uh, so, yeah. So, I don't think we're going to be doing that, but it's just interesting to get sort of the... The ins and outs of alchemy, too, you know? So, I really do like that. 
And yeah, just I think just the most compelling thing about this is Rose, you know? How, honestly, yeah, she is a mirror of Ed and Al's story, but at the same time, you know, it's... I don't want to say it's more tragic, but I don't know. It, it's pretty friggin' tragic, so... Um, but I mean, it's just, you know... I, I guess it's honestly just, like, a different... You know, just how, you know, what they fall to, where... Um, it kind of reminds me of uh, Attack on Titan when you know, Kenny's talking about how oh, we're all a slave to something, you know? We all fall back on something. And, you know, for Rose, she fell to religion. She fell to uh, Father Cornello, where Ed and Al, they fell back on what they knew, which was alchemy. And they learned everything they could and tried and failed human transmutation. So, so yeah. So all that was very, very interesting. Um, and yeah, just a, a, a good message at the end too of just, you know, move forward. You just got to keep moving forward, you know? So I like that. Which honestly, you know, like I just said, you know, with Ed and Alan Rose, it's like, well, they, they fall back, you know, on things, you know, Ed and Al, they fell back on alchemy to try to do human transmutation. She fell back on religion with, you know, Father Cornello in the hopes of him bringing, uh, bring her parents back, you know, through, the sun god Lido, uh but you can't fall back on some of that stuff you have to keep moving forward so very very interesting stuff again a, a fast-paced episode but i think i'm sticking with this like i i, I think i'm i i think i'm getting uh i'm getting this so hopefully hopefully i'm getting this as best i am so as best i can be i suppose so yeah that is pretty much it with all that being said i'm alex from seventh hour films and i will see you guys next time take care Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all my Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reactions, as well as another playlist or video you can go click on if you want. There's also a, a, a bit, subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.